Okay, so now we are in a subsection of section 5, uh, theorems. So conditional derivations actually help us uh, prove uh, arguments uh, that have no premise or sentences uh, that have no premise. Um, so consider the following statement, following sentence. P implies Q, implies not Q, implies not P. Sometimes this is called contrapositive property. Uh, so there's no premise, just a conclusion. So how do we prove it? Well, because this is a conditional uh, uh, statement, we basically start assuming uh, that this first part is true. Because again, I, I keep repeating this, if the first part is false, whether the second part is true or false, doesn't matter, this entire statement is true. This is the essence of the truth table. So if this is true, however, this must be true so that this entire statement is true. So start with the assumption P implies Q is true. All right. Um, so assumption for conditional derivation. Um, well, OK, now I want to show this. So what I want to show is another conditional sentence. So therefore, start assuming not Q, because if not Q is false, this statement is true anyway. So suppose not Q is true. This is assumption for conditional derivation. This is a subproof of the uh, proof of the theorem. So this is uh, uh, line two. Okay, so what do we have? I have P implies Q, true. Not Q, true. So I have modus uh, talon. Not P must be true. This is modus talon thanks to arguments in line one and two. Okay, so if not Q is true, not P must be true as well. So that's the end of the uh, proof of this subproof. So that means in line four, I have uh, not Q implies not P. Um, well, remember, I started with P implies Q and I show, so this is true. So this must be true as well. So therefore five, this is the, 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 the final conclusion of this proof. Um, P implies Q, in fact implies, not Q implies, not P. So this is how we prove a theorem. So let's consider another example. So here is the example I would like to prove. P implies Q and P implies R implies, so this is the bracket, P implies Q and R. Okay, that one is a complicated theorem. Okay, how do we prove this? Well, again, this is a conditional. So this is the necessary, uh, I'm sorry, this is uh, kind of P, this is Q. So I will start by assuming that the first part is true. So P implies Q and P implies R is true. Assumption for conditional derivation. Very good. Um, what can I deduct from this? Well, by simplification, P implies Q must be correct. Simplification of the argument in line one. Similarly, P implies R must be true. Again, this is simplification of argument in line one. Okay, well, what else do I have? Well, that's it, basically. I kind of stuck. But remember, I want to prove this, P implies Q and R. So this is another conditional statement. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open a new box because this is a subproof. Um, if P is false, this statement, this entire statement is true. 
If P is true, this must be true so that this conditional statement is true. So therefore, I'm going to assume or I'm going to look at the case where P is true. So this is assumption on conditional derivation. Don't forget, because I haven't closed the uh, proof, I can use everything beforehand. So given that P is true, what else do I have? P implies R, P, so modus ponen, R must be true. So this is modus ponen between the arguments 3 and 4. So what else? Um, remember, I'm trying to show Q and R, so I already showed R. Um, and so I need to show Q. How can I show that? Well, given P implies Q and P, Q must be true. This is another modus ponen between the arguments uh, in line two and four. Modus ponen. So that's it, P and Q, they all correct, uh, true, I'm sorry. So therefore, P and Q must be uh, true by conjunction property of these two arguments, four and six. And you know what? That's end of the proof. So if P is true, so this is line eight. If P is true, P and Q must be true. So this is conditional derivation thanks to all the lines, all the statement in line between four to seven. And what I have now shown is that if P implies Q and P implies R is a true statement, P implies P and uh, R, I'm sorry, so that's a, a not Q and R, all right? So this should be Q and R. Q and R, I'm sorry for my mistake. So, okay, so sorry for my mistake. This should be P implies Q and R. Again, conditional derivations, thanks to the arguments in between four and se uh, seven. So what I have just shown is that if P implies Q and P implies R is true, well then P implies Q and R must be true. And hence, uh, line nine, I basically rewrite this theorem. P implies Q and P implies R will imply P implies P and R. So this is how we basically uh, prove this argument.